Hello everybody and welcome to another live English class. Um, I'm Christian and this is Kangaroo English. Um, it's Thursday today. Normally I do live classes on Tuesday, but uh, Tuesday was, was a little bit complicated and so I couldn't. I apologize. Um, but today I'm here with a surprise, a surprise class. And um, today we're going to play a few little games, uh, a few fun games. Um, hello to everybody who's joining us. Um, AJ Kumar Chaudhary. <laughs> I'm sorry about the pronunciation of your name. Uh, Carlos. Enrique, Adam, Sh uh, Adam Sh 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 Shapla from Poland, um, uh, Raf Rafid Malala, or Jenny, of course, Jenny, hello. Um, Crazy Time is here, uh, Lutza, uh, Midibal, Tugba Toptas, Mohamed Mohamud, Nabil Jalale, uh, Mus. Musin Tene from Tenerife, uh, Sanket Sama, hello. Rogelio is here, uh, Felipe in Brazil. Um, lots, lots of brilliant people. Uh, thank you so much for, for joining me. Um, today I'm going to start with one game and then another game and then the three games today. Okay, so uh, hello to Askat in Russia. So first we're going to Game of knowledge. Ooh. General knowledge. Okay, general knowledge. Let's see uh, how good you are at general knowledge. Um, okay, so, question. What, okay, so this is a vocabulary question, okay? What is a part of the eye and also a student? What is the part of an eye and also a student? Wow, very good English and Arabic. And CK002 and Natalia Cordoba. And Abraham, no, Abraham, no. Um, Patricia, Vladimir. Um, good work, guys. It is a pupil. Exactly. And you might be interested to know that this word pupil comes from Latin and it means doll. Doll. But why would doll be a part of your eye? The reason is that if I look in your eye, I see a reflection of me, very, very small, like a tiny little doll. And that's the reason why pupil is, is, is also a student, because they're small. These are my pupils. These are my small people that I'm teaching. Okay. Um, just some random information for you. Uh, okay, let's have a look for another question. Um, okay. Um, no, that's, that's too simple. I know that you're more intelligent than that. Uh, okay. Um, no. Um, no. This, this, some of these questions are very strange. Um, okay, this is, this is a good question. This is a good question. What is the job of a frogman? That's right. In English, there exists something called a frogman. So what does a frogman do? Uh, no, <laughs> not jumping. A frogman doesn't jump or speak. 
Very good, Fabrizio. Fabrizio Monteleone and Adam Schapla. Uh, a frogman is a synonym for a diver. So, a diver is somebody who goes under the water, normally with a mask and a respirator and some oxygen tanks on the back. And they look like a frog because they have the flippers. Hey, little crabby. The crab's waving at you guys. Hey, say hello to everyone. <laughs> um, hello, Clayton. Nice to see you in class. Uh, yeah, so uh, the flippers on the feet. The flippers. Frogman. Uh, okay. Um, this is a more technical question. Okay, more technical question. Um, what is the normal color of a fire extinguisher. Hmm. Do you know this word? A fire extinguisher. What is the standard color? Very good, Vladimir and Josue and Gerson and everybody except for Ascat. Well, maybe in your country it's a different color, but um, This is a fire extinguisher. Um, the company, the company that, that, that provides our fire extinguishers, I asked them if one day I could go to their factory and, and you know, spray the, the, the fire extinguisher. And they said, yeah, no problems. Come and, and you can play with the fire extinguisher. So one day I'm going to go and make a video about this. <laughs> Uh, okay. Stay. <laughs> Fire extinguisher. Okay. Um, okay, let's have a look. Um, let's have a look. Um, dun -dun -dun. No. No, this... Ooh. No, maybe it's... Too, no, that's too easy. Too easy. Uh, no, it's too easy. Ooh. Okay. I like this question. How many humps humps how many humps does a dromedary camel have a dromedary hey mr bean <laughs> how many humps on a dromedary camel well <laughs> Who, who said three? Seriously? <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, the answer is one. A dromedary camel only has one hump. I think the other camel is a Bactrian camel, I think. But it definitely doesn't have three, okay? I'm sure that there are no camels with three, I, I think. Um, okay. Um, ooh, ooh, ooh. Uh, okay. Um, no. 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 Ah, this is an interesting question. I'm sorry. Looking at me reading questions is not very, um, not very exciting, right? Um, okay. No. Um, Okay, what? No, this is not good. No, this is also not good. Um, is... <laughs> okay, what about this one? Um, which instrument tells us direction? What's the name of the instrument that, that, gives, that tells you the direction? Like north, south? East and West. Very good, Ali Reza. Very fast. And Vladimir as well. Vladimir as well. Very nice. 
it's called a compass. And if, if, you, if you know somebody in life who has lost their direction, maybe they're not sure if they want to be a doctor or they want to be an artist or they want to stay at home and do nothing, we can say they have lost their compass. They have no idea what to do. I hope that all of you have a strong compass. You know exactly what you want. But it's not easy, you know? That's why you have to try lots of different things, you know, to discover what you, what you want to do. Okay, final question, final question. Um, what is the name of a leather case for a gun? What's the name of the thing where you put, where you put your gun here? Or maybe if you're in the FBI, you put your gun in here, no. Wow, Vladimir and Adam, that's seriously fast. Seriously fun. The answer is holster. Yeah. And uh, I think the origin is obvious, no? Because it holds, holds the gun. Of, of course Vladimir is a gangster. He's Russian. <laughs> Or Ukrainian or something, you know. All, all these Eastern Europeans are gangsters. <laughs> once, you, once you go past Italy, it's just, there's no laws. There's no, there's just, just criminals. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay. Um, now we're going to play a different game. Okay, so what I want you to do is... If, if possible, I want you to just get a piece of paper. It could be a big piece of paper or a small piece of paper. A any size piece of paper, okay? And I want you to draw a pig. Okay? I want you to draw a pig, not, not write the word pig. I want you to draw a pig, okay? So, um, I'll give you, I'll give you 30 seconds to draw your pig, okay? The, the whole pig, all of the pig, the body, everything, okay? <laughs> if you want, you can draw Peppa Pig. It doesn't, it's, this is not a question of artistic ability. It doesn't have to be a perfect pig. Just some type of pig. Okay? Any pig. <laughs> and, yeah, I, I know that a lot of people don't like pigs. But, um, you know, that, that's why we have to draw them. To, so we can have a cathartic moment. <laughs> okay, so... Have you finished drawing your pig? Hmm? You finished? Okay, I'm going to I'm going to draw my pig as well. Okay. <laughs> There's my pig. <laughs> okay, so now this is actually, it's a personality test. Okay, it's a personality test. So, um, <laughs> this, now, now we are going to do the pig analysis. We're going to analyze your pig, okay? It <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe it does look like a cat. But you know, I'm not, I'm not the best artist in the world. Okay, so are you ready for your pig analysis? Here we go. So, first question, where did you draw your pig? Did you draw your pig at the top of the paper 
or at the bottom, or in the middle, or to the left, or to the right. So, if you drew your pig at the top of the paper, then you are positive and optimistic. If you drew your pig in the middle of the paper, then you are a realist. You're practical. If you drew your pig at the bottom of the paper, then you are pessimistic and negative. <laughs> hmm. I'm curious, how many of you discovered this to be true? <laughs> how many positive and negative and practical people do we have in this class? Okay, next question. Your pig, which direction is your pig facing? Is it facing straight on or facing to the right or the left? Ah. So, if your pig is facing left, then you believe in tradition and you are friendly and you are also very good at remembering dates. So maybe you remember everybody's birthday and you remember um, the anniversary of your, I don't know what, and you believe in tradition. Mm, okay. If your pig faces right, then you are innovative, an innovator, and you're very active, but you forget dates and you do not have a strong sense of family. Wow. <laughs> wow. S surprising, right? <laughs> and finally, if your pig is facing the front, like my pig, then you have a tendency to be direct and you enjoy playing the devil's advocate. The devil's advocate. Mm. And you are not afraid of confrontation. <laughs> uh, okay, ne next part. Um, how many details? Is your pig very detailed or not? Okay, so good question. What is the devil's advocate? Well, an advocate is very similar to a lawyer. In Spanish, it's el, el abogado del diablo, right? The devil's advocate. The idea is that you are a person who defends the devil, right? Uh, you're a person who, who, who is not afraid to, to bring up the bad things, okay? Uh... I don't live in Australia. I live in Spain. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so if your pig has a lot of details, then you are very analytical, analytical person, right? But you are also very cautious, very careful. You don't like to take risks. If your pig is very simple, like my pig, my pig's very simple. A lot of details would be like, you know, the hooves and maybe some, I don't know, some, I don't know. It's, it's, <laughs> right? Um, if the pig has few details, then you are emotional and you focus on the big picture and not on the details. But you are reckless and impulsive. Yeah, yeah, that's me. <laughs> okay, finally, finally. No, no, no. The penultimate thing, penultimate thing. If your pig has four legs, okay, if your pig has four legs, then you are secure and strong person. And maybe stubborn. Do you know what this word means? Stubborn. 
In English, we say as stubborn as a mule. It means that you don't change your mind. You make a decision and you stick to your decision. Stubborn. Like the pig with four legs. If your pig has two legs or one leg, then you are, well, okay, this is very deep. Then you are living through a major period of change. Wow. Deep. And finally, um, <laughs> the size of the tail. <laughs> now, the, the, the bigger the tail, the more intelligent. <laughs> uh, I, I had no idea. Wow, I can't believe it. Well, I'm, I'm super intelligent. Wow. Incredible. I had no idea. <laughs> so, I hope <laughs> I hope that you all had a long a long tail. <laughs> now, now listen. Of of course, this is ridiculous. This this analysis of your personality is total nonsense. But, you know, it's a little bit of fun and there's some new vocabulary to learn, right? So, um I think, um, yeah, some, some interesting vocabulary would be, um, uh, would be, um, 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 uh, uh, if, if you're analytical, okay, you can use this in a job interview, you can say, I'm an analytical person, right? Um, also, you can uh, be um, uh, reckless. Oops. Ah. Reckless, which means that you you do things um, you do things without without thinking about the consequences. Okay. Or you don't you don't care about the consequences, right? Um, uh, what else? Um, okay, so there's also some there's some there's two verbs which are interesting. Okay, so we say prone prone to being cautious. Prone. Prone to being cautious. Prone means that you are, you, you have a tendency to be cautious. So, I could say that I am prone to talk a lot. I have a tendency to talk a lot. I am, uh, well, this is an L. I um I I am prone to eating pizza. <laughs> um reckless, okay, reckless means impetuous or precipitous. Yeah, but that's also quite complicated um um vocabulary. So Alex says that in Ukrainian they have an alternative to Stubborn as a mule, which means, well, I can't read that, but, but what, what does it mean, Alex? Like, what is the English translation of your Ukrainian um, thing? Hello, El Nino de Murcia. Nice to see you. Um, yes, it's prone, exactly. It's P-R-O-N-E, prone. My, my writing is terrible, I'm sorry. Okay, and the, the other verb, the other interesting verb is struggle. It says that you struggle with trust. You struggle with trust. To struggle is to fight. Okay, so you like, ah, oh, it's like you're struggling with trust. I want to trust you, but I can't. 
okay? It's like an internal fight. So you struggle with trust. It's difficult for you, okay? Um, so yeah, so I think some interesting vocabulary, right? Okay. Um, now, the final game. I like this game. This is a vocabulary game, okay? So I'm going to write eight verbs on the board. Eight, okay? Now, now, now please. I don't want you to, to Google. No Google, no dictionaries. This is about instinct, okay? No Google, no dictionaries. No... <laughs> This, 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 is my, this is my teaching face. This is the face I use with the children when the children are naughty. Or like this. Hmm? Huh? Okay, so, uh, okay. Okay, these are verbs. Finally, this one here. Assassinate. Okay. There are the eight verbs. They are eavesdrop, eavesdrop, exterminate, ambush, gaze, embezzle, overhear, flicker and assassinate. Now I think that some of these are, um, you can maybe guess the meaning, um, but some of them are very strange, like this one, em embezzle, what a strange, what a strange thing. Uh, eavesdrop, weird, right? Okay, so now I'm going to read the definition of the word and you have to guess which word is, is the correct word, right? Okay, so here we go. Definition number one. To wait, to wait in hiding, and then to attack by surprise. Okay, so you wait, you're hiding, you're hiding, and then you attack. Ah! Wow, amazing, guys. Great vocabulary. Uh, Giovanni, Petrus, Re Regina, Gosha, Artem, Adam, Dennis. Everybody has it correct. Very good. It's this one. Ambush. To ambush is to attack someone with surprise. Good, good. Okay. Is this word related to bush? Like, you know, a bush? Like, you, because you're behind, behind a bush? I don't know. I don't know. Probably not, I don't know. Okay, number two. To murder a politician for political reasons. To murder, to kill, to kill a politician for political reasons. Yes, yes, very good. Again, so far 100%, Natalia, Mohammed, Iman, Ilyas, Lubna, Sanket Summer. Everybody has this one correct. Very good. Assassinate. Assassinate. Very nice. Very nice. Okay. Number three. To listen secretly to a private conversation. Mm. So maybe you, you have your ear, you have your ear on the wall. Mm. What are they saying? I can hear. Okay, so here we have 50-50. 50-50. Yeah. 
So the correct definition, the correct word is this one. To eavesdrop. To eavesdrop is to deliberately, with intention, with purpose, to listen to another conversation. Okay? Mm. A new word for you, to eavesdrop. Now, eaves is, okay, on the, on the roof of your house, on the roof of your house, you have this, if this is your roof, right? Let me do the roof, okay. So this is the roof of the house. These are the eaves, okay? So you can imagine in the past, in medieval times, people were standing <laughs> at, at the roof of your house, listening to the conversation inside the house. Yeah, I, I can imagine this. Definitely. Um, okay. Okay, next definition. To steal money, to steal money that is given to you to look after. So somebody, somebody gives you money to look after. I say, hey, Maria, look after this money. And then you steal it. <laughs> I'm going to buy a Ferrari. Okay, again, again, 50-50 with this one. 50-50 again. The correct, the correct uh, verb is embezzle. This is a very common problem in Spain, people embezzling money. Um, that's number four. It's a strange word. I have no idea about the origin of embezzle. But it's like, it looks weird. It sounds weird. Embezzle. Okay, number five. Uh, well, okay, okay, so to kill, to kill all of the creatures or people in a place. Basically, to kill everything that is alive. Yeah, that's easy. Exterminate. <laughs> Very good. Exterminate. Number five. <laughs> and, and, of course, you have to do it with the Austrian accent, like Arnold Schwarzenegger, no? I'm here to exterminate all of the animals. <laughs> my, my Austrian accent is perfect, beautiful. Uh, okay. Um, okay, number six. Number six. Number six is only three words, the definition. Only three words. To burn irregularly. To burn irregularly or to burn unsteadily. Thank you. Best Arnold Schwarzenegger impression ever. Very good. Grit Kosh, Golova Noga, Sanket Summer, Eileen Cheng, Hugo Palomino. 100% on this one. It is flicker. So, um, like if I have a, a, like a light, okay, my light here. So maybe you can see my light is like flickering, like flickering. It's not, it's not steady. It's flickering, flick, flick, flick. All right. Flicker. So normally this is for a candle. If you have a, a candle, and the light is, you know, it's so romantic, the flickering light of the candles. Or maybe the flickering light of your fire when you have your open fire and you're lying, you're lying in front of your fire with a glass of red wine. Your beautiful wife is here next to you. Um, your, your Ferrari is parked out the front. <laughs> you have big stacks of money on the coffee table. Oh, just, you know, a normal Saturday. <laughs> it's a normal Saturday. <laughs> oh yeah, oh, Katy, that is such a great example. I have this problem when sometimes my, my eye, it, 
It does this. You know this? Your eye, like, your eyelid is flickering. Oh, I hate that. It's so irritating when the eyelid... I don't know if, if any of you have this, this same problem. It's very irritating. Okay. Okay. Number seven. So we're nearly finished. Number seven is to, to look steadily at something. To look steadily. It's to gaze. Very good, guys. Wow. Amazing. Really good. Really good. Gaze. Now, there's a little difference between gaze and stare. Okay? Stare is similar. Now, stare is more like maybe aggressive, like... Or maybe, you know, like, um, if, if, if you see a very attractive man walking down the street and you're like... <laughs> and you're staring at him, huh? it, It's different. Gaze... Gaze is more, maybe, more kind of romantic. It's like, you know, when... Like, if you're, if you're talking to somebody who you really like, and you're like, oh, man, I just... And you're looking at them and... You're looking at them, but it's not scary. It's not creepy. It's not weird. It's just like, wow, oh, I love you. <laughs> um, and the final definition. Final definition is to hear a private conversation by accident. Ah. So that's the difference between over here and eavesdrop. This is on purpose, deliberately, and this is an accident. Okay? An accident. Um, so, there you go. Um, three very quick vocabulary games. Um, unfortunately, I have to go. I have to go and do horrible business things. You know, but um, the good news is that tomorrow I'm going to do another live class. So I will see you tomorrow at 12 o'clock right here and we can play some more games and I will answer some of your questions. So until tomorrow, I'm Christian and this is Kangaroo English. I'll see you in class. Bye. Bye, love you. Psst.